Hey everyone, this is FixReef and uh, there isn't going to be a repair video today. Instead, I'm very excited to share with you guys this little reefing device that I came up with uh, to help me with my reefing needs and perhaps some of you will find it uh, interesting as well. So, this is a six switch toggle box. You have probably seen some of these toggle boxes available out there uh, before and you're probably asking what is so special about something like this. So today I'm going to talk you, to you about what I was thinking about when I when I came up with this little little box. So this is a toggle switch box that you can connect to your Apex, uh, which would allow you to turn on and off um, certain equipment that's also connected to an Apex, such as uh, pumps, lights, uh, feeding modes, and, and and so on and so forth. Um, you already know that your Apex has a six switch uh, connector um, on the back which uh, you know you can connect any anything usually most people use their uh, floating switches to tell them if uh, you know a uh, top of container is full or empty or dozing containers full or empty or maybe implement some type of um, auto top off uh, in their tank uh, and I have the use of those switches as well in my system except that I used all six switches that I had um, uh, for those, you know, floating switches. So, and now I would like to do some more with my Apex, where I would want to say enable a feed mode and shut off some pumps and turn on turn on other pumps, or perhaps I would want to do a water change where I would attempt to, you know, turn off all the pumps, all of the heaters, all of the, you know, dozing, maybe turn on a light in my uh, cabinet or, or over my refugium so that I can see things and do the water change for as long as I need to and then again switch everything back on and keep going. Now what you this of course can be implemented with just logging into your fusion and uh, you know switching the manually switching the pumps on and off and that's all great but I wanted to do something that is convenient and yet reliable and that it can be implemented with a push button or a switch, an actual physical switch that you can press and, uh, you know, program your Apex so that a bunch of pumps get turned off and perhaps a light or two get turned on or for feeding mode, similar idea. Uh, and to do so, you can implement that with the, those uh, switches, in, switch inputs that Apex has. Except that, like I said, most of my switch inputs are already taken by my float switches and I don't actually have any room to add any more switches there. So a typical way to do so would be uh, to get yourself a PM module, like a PM1 or PM2, that has an additional six switch port on it. Then you have a box that you can, you know, there are commercially available boxes where, with, with buttons um, that, that you connect to that. Uh, all of this requires additional wiring, more, you know, room on your board where you have all of your equipment mounted. It just, it's just a little bit too messy. Uh, what I wanted to do is the, to have the ability to, to have a module all-in-one module that I can plug in into Apex just like you would plug in a, a, a display or EB832 or you know any of those power bars or uh, or your pumps or whatever uh, um, a DOS module and um, have that be controlled by Apex. Uh, that poses a few challenges of course but first uh, let's talk also about the buttons. So I've actually tested some of the modules that are commercially available and I found that the buttons on there were kind of small flimsy and I didn't get to be able to light them up, have them lit uh, with different colors, LED colors, so they can see when it's on, when it's off, without an additional power source. So you cannot power any of those switches, uh, any of those buttons off of those uh, that, that, that uh, mini DIN connector that's on your Apex. Uh, instead, you have an additional power source. So I've seen implementations where they would have an additional, like a USB connector there, where you have a separate USB port uh, plugging in cable that would provide additional power to run those LEDs. Again, one more time, it's just additional power, additional uh, cabling required, more mess and more uh, nonsense. So, uh, so here comes my own implementation. Let's talk about this a little bit. So you can kind of see that most of you who have uh, done some type of, you know, electro messing with electronics probably recognize this little module. This is a an Arduino Uno, uh, one of the smaller, basic, old type of Arduino boards that you can get. Um, you also have um, this, what appears to be an Arduino shield, right? Um, my case uh, to hold everything together and a couple of buttons that I wanted to talk about. So these buttons are something special. So let me talk about those real quick. 
I took me a long time to find something that I'm really happy about. Uh, and I think I found something that I really like. So these are actually high current switching buttons. They're very beefy. They, 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 they're pretty big. You can see that, you know, they're, they're bigger than my fingers, so it's easy to press. And they have this nice, satisfying click. Very, mm, seem to be very durable, very, very high quality. They also have this little um, rubber seal that allows you to, uh, to, to, to install it in such a way that it prevents any moisture, any water coming in. Especially when you're pressing this with your wet fingers as you're doing water changes or maybe feeding or whatever, you're, you know, you're all um, covered in salt water and, and you don't want your, you know, salt water getting inside or inside the mechanism of the buttons. This one prevents it from happening. It's, it's actually uh, waterproof to a certain degree anyway. So once again, very nice. You can hear the satisfying click every time I do it. Right for a uh, for for a button like this, and also when it clicks on this one, this is a latching switch, so it will stay in on position until you release it, and then it clicks again, and you release it, and it's on off. There is also a version with the momentary uh, button. When the momentary button is is the one that you can click, and as long as you press, it's on, you release, and it's off. And I wanted to have that that type of um, variety in my uh, in my uh, switch box. All right. So we have the buttons, we have Arduino, we have an Arduino shield, which is, I, I've designed this custom um, PCB boards for it because I don't want to be dealing with wiring inside, it's just too messy, this is nice and clean, um, and uh, it, you, you know, you mount everything on here, it's, you mount all of your uh, controller related stuff, and you also mount all of your buttons on here, and uh, what this does is then, it, as a shield, it communicates with Arduino, and Arduino has code in it that, that's, you know, that's going to communicate with your Apex. Uh, you probably, some of you probably already aware, it's not very common knowledge, but the communication protocol that the Apex uses has been uh, published uh, online. It's sitting on GitHub. And I'll link the, uh, the code um, uh, in, in the, you know, in the comments below. But um, you can make uh, something like simple as this as Arduino to pretend that it's a PM1 module, as an example, just for the purposes of the uh, toggle box, uh, that it can talk to Apex and it can send the state of each button pressed back to Apex and you can then program your Apex to do what you want. Um, and so when you take this shield and you attach it to, to an Arduino that's programmed to, to act like a PM1 switch, uh, now you have yourself a little, uh, module that's compatible with, a, with an Apex, and, um, uh, and you, can, you can now uh, make it into a toggle box. I've installed these uh, USB ports over here in the configuration that's not very typical to an Apex module, which usually has like a dual stacked USB port. This one's separate two USB ports, uh, similar to what a, you know, Apex has on a, on a feeder, for example, because of the you know, limitation in my configuration here. And what happens here is that this basically allows to you to your module to talk to the Aquabus port uh, on, on an Apex. So what you do is you plug in your typical Aquabus cable, uh, it goes into your Apex, and then you can use the second port to daisy chain that Aquabus communication over to your other port so that you are not entirely using up one full port on your Apex. The power for the entire module comes from the Apex, either your EB832 or your head unit if you don't have one, uh, so it powers all of this, um, and so you don't need any additional power, and it's strong enough to also power the LEDs on all of these buttons so that they all light up. Finally, I also created a 3D printable enclosure that fits all of this securely, nothing's wobbling, nothing's loose uh, inside, no hot glue being used whatsoever to hold anything together, and... Um, and so this, uh, this basically, this box once assembled doesn't have anything, doesn't have anything um, sticking out of it other than what you're going to plug in your, your Aquabus cable into, and uh, and it holds it all together and secure. Um, I kind of make it made it into into this um, nice finish on this, on on the top with uh, markings for you know the number of each button so that you know which one you're going to be programming or pressing. Um, so a very nice little case. Um, so I can't wait to assemble all this together and show you how this actually works. All right, so it looks like the shield board is installed. 
I'll show you the buttons in a minute. Um, I'll secure it. And this time I'm not using any, hot of, any type of hot glue because um, we are going to over-engineer all this. So the board is secured with a couple of screws. That's good. Now we need to put our Arduino board on top. It's perfectly and um, also serviceable. You can pull it out, you can reprogram it, uh, put it back in if you need to. And the cover, the back cover goes on top and we get it also secured with a couple of screws. So on the back I also have a mounting plate, so you can have a mounting plate mounted on your board and then it just slides in and holds it in place, but this is your entire um, toggle box. See how nice it is, the buttons look high quality and they feel high quality and they are in fact high quality. Um, the box itself is very solid, I, it, it feels kind of heavy because of all of the stuff inside and um, it also has those two um, USB ports that are going to be connecting to your uh, Apex Aquabox. Okay, so now we have it assembled. Let's um, let's do some testing. So you would get a, a USB cable. This is a three foot one. I also have six foot ones available for longer ones. I just want to use the shorter one because I hate all this uh, cable clutter. And just six foot one, unless you you mounting it well away you, from your Apex gear. You don't need a six one. Three foot one is just uh, just enough. So you'll get one of those, and um, let's see how it works. This is a nice, solid, thick, yet flexible um, USB cable. It should work just fine. Now I'm going to plug it in on one of the sides. Okay, all of the buttons are off. Let's plug it in. It can go into any one of these USB ports. Um, and just to make sure that it's working before we even go into Apex, let's press some buttons and see if we have the light. So it shows that the bottom row, the uh, latching uh, switches are going to be green, and the top row would be uh, blue, I believe. So every time I press, the light comes on, I, re I uh, release, and it turns off. So the bottom, the top is going to be blue, the bottom is going to be green. Very nice soft green and soft blue colors that's going to look real nice and and also work. Have some type of function, functional use in it. Okay, now let's switch to um, let's switch to the head unit and see what we what type of um, functionality we get. Okay, so the unit's plugged in. You can kind of see it already. Tells me that there are new tiles. I'm going to see if it shows up in modules. You can see that PM1 is now connected. And um, I don't really have any other PM modules, that's the only one. So I'm going to put all of the switches up on the board. Okay, now we have all of the switches showing up. We're, we're only looking at switch 3 from 1 to 6. So the lower 6 switches, the upper 2, belong to something else. So let's just see if it works. So if I were to press just number 4, immediately number 4, turns on, or almost immediately, I should say. There's a little bit of a delay in Apex, but that's the way how it works. Now let's turn off 4 and turn on 5. Um, have to wait a little bit for uh, the controller to up update, and it comes on. And we can have all three of them on at the same time. And um, let's see if that updates. And that updates too. And uh, now all of this is off. And let's say I'm going to hold this button number 2. All right, and button number two is now reacting to the uh, press, and um, and when it's uh, when it's off, then it's off. Uh, although there is a delay, you can see that there is a clear delay between 
um, from the point that I press the button to the point that the, uh, it shows up in Apex, in reality, actually, it's almost immediately in reaction to what Apex does internally to all the, you know, to all the outlets that it turns on and off based on these buttons. It's just the way how it um, shows it in the web page has a delay because of the web page is not immediately updated, doesn't have real time. So that's all what it is. It's all working. It's a toggle switch box with six buttons that are lit with LEDs inside different colors. I have a variety of, I think, blue, green, red. I can get some other colors for them as well. They're very, very high quality buttons. They feel nice and high quality. This is something that I am very um, happy to see on my board that, that just looks solid, that looks clean, that looks high quality and most importantly durable. So all six buttons does not require additional PM modules. I can attach it to any of the Aquabus ports on my Apex, to EB832, to the head unit, to other available ports on other units, and just have myself a nice clean toggle box that uh, does not require an additional PM1 or PM2 module to extend and expand. So you just get this box, plug it into your Apex, and it just works. Allows for you know additional expansion, so you can you can daisy chain additional um, uh, modules out of it, regular Apex modules or additional toggle boxes for that matter, and um, and you can also mount it on the back of your panel with a mounting bracket. So as you can see, guys, I have a few more of these boards made. So I'll have a few of these modules available if you're interested. Uh, what you'll get is a fully assembled toggle box. Come in just like this. Um, you will get the mounting bracket with screws. Uh, you will get a three-foot uh, USB cable. I also have a six-foot cable. Uh, that's an option instead if you need a longer one, but either three or six-foot cable, and um, it'll come fully assembled. Again, available colors are blue, green, red, um, and I'm probably missing a few other ones. Uh, I'm sure I can get orange, I can get yellow uh, as well, and again, the configuration is lower level. It would be the latching buttons. The upper level are going to be momentary buttons. So, but obviously available in any kind of configuration. But that's that's the configuration that I find useful, at least in my uh, in my setup. So, if you're interested, drop me a note. If um, if you have any questions, let me know. Post down below. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.